Hey, we're going to do a quick little video, and this is one of those things where I was sharing with you guys to how you get like shocked, right? You're like, wow, what's going on? And what the story is, I'm winterizing my RV, and I've used this stuff in the past. It's this uh, RV and Marine antifreeze, and I was kind of shocked because it said it was good for 50 below, this FBP. And this is stuff I picked up at Menards. And long story short of this, just being completely curious as we move into cooling systems, I'm going to be teaching the students here how to test uh, antifreeze for freezing points with just a traditional easy tool. But then we use this really fancy guy, this refractometer. And we're going to show that in a second. This is a really, really uh, good way to test the actual freezing points of uh, antifreeze and then also how to do battery testing right we've already done that before but check this out so anyway uh, just out of pure curiosity I took a sample of this and I stuck it in my freezer and the reason was is as I was putting it in the RV I just felt it was pretty watery and it just for some reason there's something in my gut that had me not trusting it does that make sense I, I can't tell you what it is part of being a mechanic is we got to go on intuition does that make sense and there was just this lack of trust, and that's why I started testing it. And when it froze in the freezer, I got really nervous because I had this stuff now in my RV and tanks and running through lines and this and that. Um, I was pretty, pretty freaked out because it's pretty late in the year. We're already getting that point of freezing, right? Um, so what's, what's a logical next step? I think there's something wrong with the product. Test it. Okay, I tested it and it showed me that it would freeze at around 20, 25, 28 degrees, something like that. Here in Iowa, it gets zero, right? I mean, we and then with wind chills or whatnot, this uh, RV is also parked outside, so I have that. Uh, it's going to get cold, basically. So with that, I called the manufacturer and that's what we need to do. And I think the point of this video is, is we can't be afraid to sometimes go, hey, I don't know, I'm not sure. Now, when I called them and said that their product froze, was I yelling at them? No. No, I was asking, hey, wait a second, what's going on? Because there's always that possibility there's a bad batch, right? Yep. But two brand new, out of the jug, just broke the seal, uh, two different jugs. I was having a hard time believing that. There was probably so much of a problem, but I just was like, what's going on? So we got a hold of uh, the company, this FBP, and got a hold of a cool guy named Bruce. And Bruce went ahead and said, hey, I handle calls like this quite a bit. And he said this, if you go ahead and read the bottle, okay, there's actually a warning right on here that says this. It says, uh, uh, Marine Amphreeze is formulated to guarantee burst protection to minus 50 degrees when used at full strength, so undiluted. And it says, it will become solid at low temperatures, but it will not burst the system if used at full strength. So there's the majority of people going out there just going to trust products and go ahead and use them and say, yep, nothing to worry about it and just dump it in, right? The, the fact that some of us are going to look into something, test something, use tools like this, wait, I was pretty scared. You know, because like I said, that sample that froze in there. Now, what he said, and this is the great reason for calling and doing tech calls, is that the formula in here, it's meant to let it freeze, but it just won't let it grow so much that it's going to expand and burst the pipe all the way up to 50 below zero. And we don't have a way to test that. So we're going to have to have a little trust, Bruce. <laughs> he seemed like a guy that knew what he was talking about on the phone call, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. For you guys, for the rest of this video though, I want to show you here, this is a tool that we use. And what we do is we take and we drop water on here first as a, as a way to test the tool and zero it out. And then we go and we take a sample, whatever it is we want to test, battery acid or different uh, um, uh, antifreezes. And, there's, and then you put that sample on there and then you go like this and you look through the light. And it's going to be hard to show that. So what we did is we took a picture of it. Keegan here, we got it on his phone. You can see here, we end up with a scale like that. And well, this was the sample, guys, right there. Yeah, yeah. So look at that. That would actually freeze at about 25. At about 25 degrees, that's going to get solid. Okay? But like they said, it won't get solid enough until 50 below to cause bursting. But this is what got me all nervous cool thing. I'm excited that I learned something new about a product, right? And it also remind, it reminded me of something that before we go jumping into calling manufacturers, we could be reading manuals better. We could be reading labels. This to me would have still warranted a phone call for me out of curiosity to learn more about the product. Does that make sense?
So I want to thank uh, Bruce for your tech help on that, so I don't have to worry about it. My RV, I used this last year with no problems. That's a little tip of the day to read instructions using cool tools.